Hi everyone, so today we are sitting here uh, with Professor Tushar Jain in IIT Mandi and Professor Jain is head of Center for Continuing Education. This is something which is a new uh, center in IIT Mandi also and in many IITs now these kind of centers are coming up and uh, this center is very very relevant center and today uh, we will be interacting with Professor Jain and we will know more about this center and its relevance. So welcome Professor Jain. Thank you, thank you for um, covering this center for continuing education at IIT Mandi. Okay, wonderful. Professor Jain as uh, we all know this kind of centers are something which is the new uh, things mm. which are coming up now and mm. it's a very relevant today. Mm. So my first point to you is related to this particular center only. Many mm. of my viewers are not even aware what mm. is the center for continuing education. So please okay. tell us about that. So this center for continuing education as the name suggests that it is kind of a continuing education and this center particularly takes the education of IIT Mandi to the students or people who were who did not able to get the become the so part of an IIT. Mm. So this center carries out the outreach activities. Outreach. Mm. So outreach academic activities in terms of organizing the conferences, seminars, mm. workshops, mm -hmm. uh, faculty development programs, mm. also this short term courses which are specifically dedicated to some skill set. Mm -hmm. It is say for example if we are teaching some data science courses. Mm -hmm. So that data science courses likewise we have our BTEC and mm. MTech program. Mm. So those programs are kind of four year program, mm. two year program mm. which is which targets to the students of IIT Mandi. Mm. But if we want to take this thing to the people outside IIT Mandi so that they can get some good job mm -hmm. or they can be they can get direct placement with the specific skills in data science, uh, data science okay. say for example. Mm. So this center carries out all these activities. Mm. So for our faculty members, uh, this center basically provides the administrative and logistic supports mm. in addition to organizing this Wonderful. type of programs. Now, Professor Jain, as you said, this is the center which is providing the outreach academic activities mm -hmm. uh, for those of uh, who are not over the part of IIT Mandi as of now. I want to ask you, is it uh, some geographic area is this there is some constraint on the geographic area uh, mm -hmm. or is it for entire India or maybe outside India Easy. number one number two uh, when we uh, talk about academic things like teaching or something mm -hmm. now we talk about there's a online mode there's a offline mm -hmm. mode so professor Jain uh, through which mode do we provide mm -hmm. these out outreach activities to the students okay. these two questions sure so regarding the geographical coverage mm. or let's say the constraints i will come on to the constraints a bit later but the coverage we are not specific to any specific it can uh, be south india yeah, it can, it be, can anywhere. be anywhere mm -hmm. because most of these programs are funded by the external agencies okay so it depends on whether the agency the funding agency mm. wants that particular program for for a, for their state or not. okay mm. say for example uh, last year mm. we organize one program which has now become our flagship program <coughs> so this program is on the school camp mm. on robotics and artificial intelligence good mm. so this program and this is kind of and this is i in my opinion is kind of a very unique program it is a program of one month mm -hmm. So in this one month, we invite the students of class 10, 11th and 12th mm -hmm. for one month they stay mm -hmm. on the IIT Mandi campus. Okay. So fooding, boarding and lodging, everything is supported by the funding bodies mm -hmm. and the students get trained mm -hmm. at the early stage of their career. Mm -hmm. So they have not even started learning about the engineering. Mm -hmm. The idea is before they enter mm -hmm. into their bachelor degree in engineering, they should know that how an Arduino works, yes. how they can code, how they can make the robot and how they can experiment or mm -hmm. innovate mm -hmm. at the early age of their career. Mm -hmm. So this is, so likewise I was mentioning about, so like last time it was funded by the Himachal government okay. and their mandate is that only the Himachali youth mm -hmm. should be a part of it. Mm -hmm. So this time we are organizing in collaboration with Uttar Pradesh mm -hmm. government. Mm -hmm. So now the students of government schools of Uttar Pradesh will become a part of this. Mm -hmm. So this is some such some programs where which are uh, 
are carried out in collaboration with uh, gor state government bodies. There are other programs, say for example, we have this uh, National Skill Development Corporation. Mm -hmm. So with NSDC, we are organizing for Pan India. Mm -hmm. So any student, any working professional, mm -hmm. any faculty member could become a part of those programs. Mm -hmm. So geographically, we are covering the entire India. Mm -hmm. and in fact, um, some of our faculty members also teach on the NPTEL platform. Okay. Hmm. So, likewise, I am also teaching on the NPTEL yeah. and then I see that some of my learners are from outside Different India as well. Yes. So, this is, uh, so by, by this we can reach to infect the entire world. Hmm. This was about the first thing, the geographical coverage. Hmm. Regarding the second point, uh, what was the second point about? The second point was related to online, online and offline. Yeah, offline. I mean, okay, so we are offering the courses. Uh, in all the three modes, mm -hmm. first is the online mode, mm -hmm. second is the in-person mode, in -person. where the students or the faculty members come onto mm -hmm. the campus, they stay, they get to know the IIT ecosystem, yes. they get to know, mm -hmm. to visit mm -hmm. various mm -hmm. labs of IIT Mandi. Mm -hmm. And the third one is the hybrid program. Mm -hmm. Combination of these two. A combination of two, that the majority of the part, the it also depends on the type of course. Mm -hmm. So some part is taught online. Mm -hmm while there it requires the presence of the students on the campus for doing some hands-on experiments. Mm -hmm. Then we plan some, let's say one week or two week, mm -hmm. kind of a boot camp programs mm -hmm. so that they they can also enjoy the, mm -hmm. the niche. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, Professor Jan, I, I want to discuss with you a typical case. Mm -hmm. uh, a particular college in, let's say, southern part of India mm -hmm. wants <coughs> their student to learn something about IoT. Mm -hmm. No, they do not have the manpower, they do not have skilled mentors maybe mm -hmm. to uh, teach that. Mm -hmm. No, they need assistance from experts, uh, professors, mm -hmm. teachers, mentors, which we have in premium institutes like IIT Mandi. Mm -hmm. No, how does your Center for Continuing yes. Research help such college and such mm -hmm. students? So for, I would like to say for that for such type of activities, mm -hmm. in fact, this time we are also organizing the let me tell you a brief background about, since you have mentioned about the IoT. Hmm. So, we are organizing these IoT based courses for the Himachal youth hmm. in the next com coming months. Hmm. Now, if we want to target these people from south of India, hmm. so they can first of all, uh, let's say, they can send us quickly a proposal mm -hmm. that they want to get assistance mm -hmm. in either at the student level mm -hmm. or at the teacher's level right. because we run both the programs okay. or what we call the teacher's training program okay. because when we teach the teachers, okay. the teachers can reach to several okay. students yes. which we cannot reach yes. 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 by sitting here at in the institute. Mm -hmm. So, we can organize the teacher's training program for mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. and I would suggest that they should be on the campus. Mm -hmm. if. The, uh, if, if the if they were not able to come onto the campus, mm -hmm. then we can also organize the online classes for them. Mm -hmm. The uh, kind of a short term course, let's say one week mm -hmm. or one month program. Mm -hmm. And it is not necessarily that they need to do it continuously. Mm -hmm. Particularly with when we talk about the month, one month or one week program, there mm -hmm. are certain number of hours mm -hmm. are associated to it. Mm -hmm. So the people can take the opportunity mm -hmm. in that. Hmm. IITs are a pool of uh, you know academic excellence and they have a very good human resource available. Mm -hmm. Now when we want to outreach and we want to make this entire module very successful, there comes a stage where you know uh, sometime a third party agencies also come mm -hmm. in between and help further to you know help mm -hmm. uh, you know, outreach these kind of yeah. things. So are you also thinking on True. those lines Professor Jain? Yes. So in fact, we have signed, okay, let me tell you uh, again a brief background about that. Hmm. So, whenever we do such kind of uh, these outreach activities yes. or some programs, so in those programs, we prefer that the faculties of IIT Mandi should teach. Hmm. Yeah? In, that, in that case only, whatever we are teaching to our students, hmm. in the same way, the same thing can go to the people outside. Hmm. Now, when they are being, uh, uh, say for example, the objective of the teachers is to teach. Mm -hmm. 
Hmm. Now the teachers at the same time is teaching hmm. the uh, institute courses also. Hmm. So we don't want to burden teachers. Hmm. So we signed several MOUs hmm. with governments and private agencies hmm. by which they most of the time they become you can say the implementation hmm. partner. Hmm. Okay. Then the people here will teach hmm. and whatever be the implementation platform hmm. or the management of the students, hmm. likewise you say the attendance, monitoring, hmm. all those things will be handled by those hmm. online platforms hmm. and what we call the, the we, we specifically call them the implementation partner. Mm -hmm. So if there are some implementation partner who want to become a uh, who want uh, to to mm -hmm. to assist mm -hmm. this center, mm -hmm. okay, they are also welcome mm -hmm. to yeah. to join us. Eventually, that is going to help in spreading True. this particular thing further. Uh, Professor Jain, uh, because this is a new mm -hmm. center created, mm -hmm. I would uh, ask you that so far where we have reached in mm -hmm. uh, fulfilling our objectives. And what are the future, you know, True. growth prospects we have kept for ourselves? So, mm -hmm. what are the overall challenges and opportunities available mm -hmm. to this particular department? Yeah. So, this center was created, likewise, you said, a new center which was created in the last year. Okay. But it does not mean that the the such kind of activities were not being run by IIT Mandi. But, but it was uh, being run with in in it was a very small section under. Uh, uh, under another degree. Mm -hmm. So now this center has got his, his own identity so that now we can reach to the to, to many people. Mm -hmm. So that now to carry out the activities or in the last one year we mm -hmm. had we have taken some major steps mm -hmm. in signing the the MOUs which we call the memorandum of understanding with the state governments. Mm -hmm. Uh, skill development mm. uh, body, say for example, Himachal Pradesh, Kaushal Vikas Nigam. We have also signed the MOU with Uttar Pradesh Skill Development Mission. Mm. We are working with National Skill Development Corporation. Mm. Uh, and we are also working with Directorate of Technical Education, mm. uh, Sundanagar Himachal Pradesh. Mm. So we are basically have signed, uh, we have worked quite fastly in shaping up these new programs. Mm -hmm. uh, so this was, in fact, if we talk about in numbers, so almost more than 1,000, mm -hmm. I would say, I would say, I mean, this is a, still a rough number, mm -hmm. but almost more than 1,000 numbers we have trained, mm -hmm. including the, the school students, and we have target each and every age group, mm -hmm. whether they are the students of the school, mm -hmm. they are the students of the college, mm -hmm. they are the students of the ITIs and mm -hmm. polytechnics, mm -hmm. and the faculty members also. Mm -hmm. Now in the immediate future, we are targeting the administrative officers mm -hmm. because now we have the school of management as well. Yes. So we will target, we, I mean, mm -hmm. not target, but we, will also, we are also floating the programs, say in leadership and management mm -hmm. for the administrative officers who mm -hmm. are basically some the faculty members, but they look at the deputy mm -hmm. directors level. Mm -hmm. So, in the immediate future, so these new programs will be in our portfolio, mm -hmm. the uh, leadership and management. And now, since we would also be carrying this Pradhan Mantri Kaushal Yojana 4.0, mm -hmm. so we'll be running some new mm -hmm. age skill courses mm -hmm. under this PMKUI scheme, mm -hmm. so that we can reach mm -hmm. to the entire nation in some specific skill set. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Pro Professor Jain, uh, we know that government is very serious about mm. uh, creation of the employment mm. and that cannot be created unless until skill uh, level of the local people mm. youth is increased. So, your department I think is a very very relevant department in mm. that direction. I want you to tell us like how this particular program in your university, in your institute is leading to the skill development mm. activities among the youth mm. and uh, is it further related to what we say yes. Atam Nirbhar Bharat or yes. Make in India, these mm. kind of uh, programs. So likewise I say that we are going to float the programs under this PMKUI scheme mm. and this is the in line with our Honorable Prime Minister mm. that they, he wants to develop the skills of every youth. Yes. Mm. 
so, so that they, they can, can become the self-employed, the self-employed. Or mm-hmm. they can be entrepreneur yes or they can be immediately employable mm-hmm. may not be may not they, they may not get the hefty package but mm-hmm. at least they should not be mm-hmm. uh, they should not remain as it is mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. so these are some kind of a skill development and these skills we are being an iit we are targeting those courses or what you call the new age future skill courses mm-hmm. for example data science mm-hmm. iot mm-hmm. Uh, machine learning mm-hmm. uh, industrial automation mm-hmm. uh, because in fact in himachal pradesh also we have several companies in pharmaceuticals where mm-hmm. a lot of automation system is being mm-hmm. used mm-hmm. now we are also training the farmers as well mm-hmm. under the cc mm-hmm. and since we uh, have developed a new facility called the climate control agriculture mm-hmm. and the idea is to take this uh, this facility mm-hmm. to the local farmers mm-hmm. so a farmer who does not know anything about the engineering or maybe he is illiterate or maybe he is 10th class dropout mm-hmm. now he is learning those all electronics mm-hmm. embedded systems mm-hmm. how he can integrate the sensors how he can measure the data what he can infer from the data mm-hmm. yeah so all these things i mean it is quite commendable to see mm-hmm. so the idea is to take all this thing to the local youth mm-hmm. and train mm-hmm. Uh, in those future age skill courses so that they can be employed fast mm-hmm. now regarding this placement thing mm-hmm. so we are also providing the placement support mm-hmm. to these students mm-hmm. um, sometimes we carry out some sessions in terms of the soft skills mm-hmm. the personality development mm-hmm. because these students are mostly uh, 10th class dropout or the or, or dropout at some level of their mm-hmm. education mm-hmm. and they may not have gone to the formal education mm-hmm. so if they want to present themselves mm-hmm. to the outside world we ca- we we conduct some uh, as an integrated part of these technical courses mm. that how they can uh, make their presentation skills better mm-hmm. how they can uh, do the group interview discussions mm-hmm. uh, about their soft skills mm. uh, some vocabulary classes some english classes mm-hmm. and also the most important aspect of all of this non technical side mm-hmm. is we are also conducting mm-hmm. the the we are also enabling them to take up the startup mm-hmm. because we also have this incubation unit mm-hmm. so this incubation unit catalyst is also supporting them mm-hmm. in terms of starting their mm-hmm. uh, their startups mm-hmm. so we are organizing the some entrepreneurship classes for them as well mm-hmm. wonderful yeah Okay, so Professor Jain, now I think uh, we have come to almost an end of this wonderful uh, session which you mentioned. Uh, but I will end up this entire session with again one question that mm-hmm. is related to various you know, tie-ups and MOUs. Yeah. So, with what kind of organization so far? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm I'm not interested True. in names, but yeah. uh, I only want to know whether these tie-ups mm-hmm. and MOUs mm-hmm. which you have signed, they are with uh, mm-hmm. government bodies or they are with the private bodies mm-hmm. or they are. you know b2b or b2c or yeah. what kind of uh, organizations uh, do you uh, so mostly uh, most most of the mous are signed with the, with the government bodies okay because when we want to board in some some private agencies so they are basically the implementation partners so okay. don't um, it's just a different terminology hmm. so they send us some letter of intent okay. and then we do some service agreement for some short duration mm-hmm. so such kind of uh, activities i mean we in this way we can engage some private agencies as well okay wonderful yeah. so that means there is a opportunity for private agencies also true definitely so they should write to us and then mm-hmm. you can see how to collaborate wonderful <laughs> so uh, let me now again thank you professor jain this yeah. for uh, telling us in detail about the center for continuing education which is the outreach academic program of mm-hmm. iit mandi and i wish you all the very best for this program yeah. further and uh, i'm sure this will help mm-hmm. lot of students and thanks a lot for your time thank you thank you